YouTube for like an hour and complaining to Craig Downs that the media center should put instructions in, in things and they say that children just lose it so they don't do it. I feel like it's a two button solution. Okay. So we'll see. Well, okay. Well, you fixed the record player too. So. That was Kristen. Okay, so Kristen fixed it. <laughs> Someone take a picture of it so I know how to do it when I get home. Right. It's wrong. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, so there's, you know, thank you very much for coming. A um, couple important details to mention first. Uh, first and foremost is to thank Nathan and Christine and all of you um, for coming. My name is uh, Michael Robert Pollard. I was born in New York City in 1970. Um, raised mostly in Arizona and the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, my joke is I've been living in Chicago since uh, 2004. Four? When were you one, Bella? When was I born? Yeah. <laughs> so 2003, we lived here in 2004, and Chicago's been a good uh, art and sports town. It's been um, very good to me. Um, I've been working on and off with different projects with the Roman Season crew for many, many years. Um, they're good friends um, and great collaborators, so I was um, very touched when they asked me to do this. Um, and let me get away with everything, like bringing a record player and having two events and um, showing up every Sunday with beer and all those sort of things. So, um, I know Nathan has a couple questions that he'd like to ask, so I guess we could start with that. Yeah, I have questions, but I think anyone else can jump in any time as far yeah, as I'm absolutely. concerned. Uh, absolutely. But I'll just start to start it. Um, so it's called, the show is called A Dreamer of Pictures. Right. How do you make pictures? Uh, make it up, you know, and yeah. dream them. I mean, it, the, that line comes from a, um, you know, it's cheese ball for me, uh, but a Neil Young Crazy Horse song, Cinnamon Girl, uh, and a dreamer of pictures. But um, you know, when I was in seventh grade and nobody talked to me, and I was at a, a new school for the fifth time, I just drew instead of doing my classwork all the time. Um, I am very pleased that my son does his classwork and does all the drawings. So <laughs> I'm trying to keep all those and actually put them on real pieces of paper. Um, but yeah, it's just always been like trying to figure it out, um, problem solve, and um, making those things work um, the way I want to. So yeah, the title is taken from music. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess I have two questions. Do you want to talk about your relationship to music at all? And um, the other question is, are you thinking about your work as narrative in some way as well? Um, narrative, yes and no. Um, not so much right now. Um, right now it's about grabbing different things and putting them together and trying to make a cohesive piece out of it. Um, and then thinking of something funny or relevant or whatever to name it. Um, I forgot the first part of the question. So you, you use the title from a piece of music. Was right. it the cheesiness that appealed to you, or the musicality? The or... musicality. Yeah, okay. um, music is pretty much everything in my life. It's been the one thing that's always been there. Um, from when I got a paper out, my first Walkman. Um, when I got my own room, when I was like eight, I got a record. My grandfather gave me a record player um, and a little, you know, FM radio at the same time, which was pretty amazing. Um, but it's, the two have always go hand in hand. Um, no work happens without music being there um, for the most part. And it's changed and evolved the work and the music over the years, but it's always still a really important thing, just in life as well, um, music for me. Um, I don't think I could deal with it otherwise. Music and sarcasm and uh, baseball kind of keep me alive. And Isabel. <laughs> I'm going to try not to embarrass my daughter, so, um, but I will. Do you want to ask your dad something before I ask him more questions? No. You can embarrass him back, that's okay. <laughs> That'd be a good idea. Actually. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh my God. Okay. All right, well, I'll keep rattling mine off. You can think of one if you feel like it or not. Is this a meal you have? <laughs> Hello. <laughs>
I listen to Neil Young a lot. We actually call my brothers and I call him Uncle Neil. Uh, I've seen him like 15 times, um, but you know I grew up in Northern California, so it's kind of in the water. Um, you know, my brother was a deadhead. I was, you know, I followed Crazy Horse. That was my jam. So um, I don't know. It just, it's just the, the loud music just kind of took me, and I just kind of went with it. Um, we, the first time I went, um, Sonic, we went because Sonic Youth was open for them, and you know, everybody, all the old hippies booed, <laughs> but we actually liked it. And then, but then Crazy Horse came on, and it was at the Cow House, which is this just awful barn in San Francisco, um, where they actually would have cow shows and gun shows and all this stuff, and it's just so loud and so awesome. And mm -hmm. it's just kind of been, I think it was like 19. I saw this shirt, um, but it's just it was just everything. I don't know, but I listen to everything. Yeah. So, but that's one that I'll always come back to. And then um, my next goal is to make archives like his, like I'm a big subscriber of his archives, and like trying to, you know, because as a maker, you make so much stuff, and then it's just like all over the place. Mm -hmm. So it's like the next six months, I got to try to figure out, you know, how I'm going to organize all this stuff, and how I'm going to place it, and then make some sort of Timeline. And I want to do it to my grandfather's paintings too, um, which all my relatives keep giving to me because <laughs> they don't want to deal with it anymore. But uh, he painted clowns and cactuses. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I was going to ask you about that too. Oh, okay. Like, you you have a you know direct relative who painted comedians, clowns in a very serious way. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that is something similar to what you do in any way, or? Um, it became, it started as, as a reaction to, and a middle finger to it. Um, my, when I was a kid, my grandfather was, you know, I was drawing comic books and Star Wars and um, superheroes and things like that. And he was very anti all of that and wanted me to get a real job and not to even draw or doodle or anything like that. Um, it wasn't until after he passed that I found all his um, World War II barrack drawings of him as a comic book character, peeling potatoes, writing letters to my grandmother, which I thought was pretty awesome. Um, I got to go through his um, studio and clean it out and organize it when he died, um, kind of on a moment's notice. Um, but it was pretty funny. Um, when I got older and I was still, like, he could s see that I wasn't going to give up, and I still managed to have a job and raise my kids and all that. Then, then he became okay with it. And then, then we would talk more about art and things like that. Um, he'd move on to writing by that point. Um, I was very lucky I didn't have to help type and edit all of his novels about you know, all the stories he had written as well that a lot of my family members did too. I got, my job was to art, you know, take care of the work, which, um, other than being hung in my house, is really you know, never left me. Uh, Neil Young and Sonic Youth, that is a moment where an older generation interacted with a younger generation. I feel like Neil Young got some heat for some things he said then related to HIV AIDS. Is that an accurate memory I have, which I did not remember from when it happened because I was too young, but I, I liked Sonic Youth when I started listening to music, and I feel like that is a that is a thing, that's like a thumbprint on the face of Neil Young that I always Probably, remember. I haven't heard that, but he's done other stupid things. Sure. Like everybody else. Um, <clears throat> he endorsed Reagan for a really long time. Um, <laughs> Yeah, this whole, like, you know, man of the people and the granola and all that, uh, when all the artists uh, tried to stick it to Ticketmaster and all those people, you know, he was very quiet, you know, they still, we're all human and we all do a lot of really stupid things. Um, I haven't heard that one in particular. Maybe totally wrong. It, it, uh, I, look it up. It doesn't matter, you know, um, yeah. because everybody does yeah. those stupid things and now... It doesn't matter if you did it as a joke 20 years ago or you know an hour ago. The the press is so you know not the press but the internet. The 
the social the attention that it yeah. gets is just so intense that um, it just it resonates more than anything else, um, and justly just justly so yeah. for uh, a lot of people. I'll probably never play my Bill Cosby comedy records again. Sure. And, like Doug Out and Fallon and thought that they were the most awesomest things in the world. I couldn't you know yeah. deleted all my Michael Jackson and you know things like you know. There's a hundred million examples yeah. of all that. So. I'm not trying to ruin Neil Young. Oh, no, not you. at all. Just I, like, I, that I was like the, the one of the Neil Young things that is in my mind of like, oh, shit, no, you went I, to that? I, I think that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I think what I remember of that tour was that a lot of the, um, like, the roadies and stuff were really sexist and rude to Kim Gordon. Oh, which sure. Is so okay. really disappointing because they were all, like, rock hippie dudes and all that. Yeah. And I could totally see that because that's just... Rock and roll bullshit. Yeah. Which is why Riot Girl was like the best thing ever. Um, Sonic Youth is, you know, kind of the precursor of that. So. All right, this is a bit of a stretch, but I'm going to keep talking about Neil Young. Okay, cool. Uh, I can talk about him. <laughs> when I think about Neil Young, I would say if I think of colors, they're red, orange, in that warm area. And I feel like a lot of the work in here is. Do you think that is us doing that to you by selecting work out <laughs> and making it more orange and red and yellow than your normal work? No. No. Um, bright colors. Yeah. From the two, even when it was really messy and really busy, it was always bright. Um, so you're not mixing colors. Primary, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's always uh, a primary palette. Um, the black and white is a new avenue or just the two colors or is, is a new avenue, but it's one that I'm like addressing very careful, you know, very cautiously, because it's out of my comfort zone. I mean, that's my comfort zone, like this stuff, my comfort zone. And to go, you know, with just, you know, a black background with white, you know, uh, a colleague from work said it was like I was taking my sketches and like pulling them inside out and then looking at them like that. So, um, I wouldn't worry, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Well, I was just, I mean, sitting here for a week or two, it's oh, like, there's, sure. a, there's a lot of orange in here. Yeah. There's a lot of red. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you know, the students leave that behind. And it's and yeah. enough cheap U Utrecht <laughs> yeah. red. You don't need to mix to anything. Me yeah. Forever. I, I created surplus at the school where we where we stored, you know, all the kids' art supplies that they threw away. And um, I mean I don't use the cheap paint anymore, but for a while that was a really yeah big thing. Um, I think it also comes from comic books and just those splash pages. I think my favorite thing about comic books growing up, which I think it's lost now because it's more adult and more, you know, focused. They're not written for kids really anymore. They may, they still write comic books for kids, but all comic books were for kids when at least when I was a kid. Um, and you know, they were bright and flashy and cartoons were bright and flashy and I mean they're probably better now, but I mean those sort of things. The analogy I would use is like the Batman T V show from the 60s, you know, was like bright and flashy, and I think a lot of my palette kind of comes, and my sensibilities kind of come from that. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, well, this has been here, a group of small kids came in one day, and they did not mask their enjoyment of what was going on, which is very different from adults, usually. Like, even if they like it, it's pretty guarded. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Yeah. Comics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm usually... Really big in the the under twelve club, you know. <laughs> I always make sure that I have snacks for kids whenever I have shows. I, I part of it is being a kid, a big kid, and um, having kids. Um, obviously, my son's Legos are in the show. Um, collaborating um, with him a lot, and I did the same with Bella when she was younger. Um, uh, one thing that's come out of this is I'm going to be a guest artist at Sen which will be really great, and uh, I've worked at my brother's high school in California a few times too, so um, I like kids because they're, you know, there's no filter, you know, for better or for worse, there's no filter, they're going to tell you as it is, whether they like it or not, and their energy, 
you know, um, it's usually, even when it's crazy, it's better than adults energy. Most of the time, not all the time. So. <laughs> Question yet? <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> yeah, I guess I do. Um, you know, you're, um, I don't know our terminology, but it seems like a lot of your, your pictures are more or less collages where a bunch of disparate things just sort of float together and um, somehow they balance and they talk to each other and they work as a set. And I'm wondering. What is your process to put these different things and, and make them into just one work of art that actually seems to have some coherence? A lot of fucking luck. Um, but, um, you know, starting from the ground with a pencil um, and doing that. And then um, a lot of these, um, I mean, I miss riding my bike to work every day, but I draw on the train instead. Um, when I first got to Chicago, I went to UC. And got on a Granville, that was like an hour each way. So you have a lot of time and you have to finish it. And my goal was always to finish the, or at least have one set done, like all the ink would be done, and then I could finish it on the way home. Um, but for what I do now is I, I start out with things that catch my eye, that I see, um, and then I try to put them together and I try to put other things in that will make them work. Um, whether that'll be, you know, some sort of like cheesy explosion or line marks that you would see from a comic book or um, reoccurring images that you know would fit in that spot. Um, I do Charlie Brown's sweater, the lines on his sweater a lot. I do ladders and arrows and those sort of things. Um, so you try to you know put it all together and put it together and make it all work, and sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. You know, there's a big stack of all the stuff that it doesn't work too. But um, but then color and paint and uh, line and all that kind of help. You know, you, whittle, you you have everything, and then you just start, especially now with painting over it in white or painting over it in black is making it go away until mm -hmm. it's like as cohesive as it can be. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how you, when you write notes, when you write your pieces, I mean, how do you do that? When you have all these sounds. Hey, this isn't my show. Well, I, I know, but it's not, but I'm asking you a fucking question, you know? Like, so, I always feel like... But it's not like we're arguing about the designated hit. <laughs> we're not going to do that. I was, there was a, one of the James Bond movies, I think it was on Her Majesty's Secret Service, where uh, he had to bust into a safe, and he had some machine that could try all the 100,000 possible combinations on the lock until the one busted it open. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm doing that manually. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's That sounds about right. I mean, you got all... Especially the way I work, I have so much going on in my head. Um, I mean, it's no secret I have ADD and, like, you know, anxiety, and so I have all this stuff, and I live in a city, and I surround myself, I don't, not always on purpose, but everything is coming at us all the time, um, you know, the days where TV shut off and the three lines yep. showed up at, like, 12 o'clock are, are long gone, you know, but you remembered those when you were a kid, and you remember the minute that they, you know, turned back on, you know, for Bella, I mean, school, TV just, you know, never stops. Um, and for me, it's taking all that stuff and trying to make something sort of cohesive to it and trying to take different things and make other things out of them mm -hmm. is a big thing. Um, Charles's wife likes to say that there's a face in every face, in every piece. You know, if you keep looking, there's something else that you can kind of um, look at in the pieces. And I think that that's true. You know, you go down one rabbit hole and then you're like, okay, I got to stop. I got to figure this part out too. And, 